Good morning, everyone, and you're all very welcome to our webinar this morning. I hope you're all doing well and sitting comfortably. I'm Bernard Walsh, Head of Pensions and Investments at Bank of Ireland, and I'm going to be your host this morning. This webinar is the sixth live webinar of our 2023 Pension Pot series, and we're delighted to be back with you talking all things pensions. We do have a playback available for any of you who missed our previous webinars, and all the details are on bankofireland.com forward slash pension pot. Today, though, our aim is to unpack the new legislation coming down the tracks for Ireland, auto-enrolment. Auto-enrolment has been a feature of every OECD country bar one, Ireland. It has been particularly successful in Australia and New Zealand and more closer to home in the UK. We have been talking about a mandatory state pension scheme in this country since the mid-1990s and now it is finally about to arrive on our shores. Today we will hear about what the scheme will involve and what it will mean for both employers and employees. Understanding more about your financial options helps you take control of your financial well-being. And your personal pension plan is a key element of future financial planning. As they say, live for today, but plan for tomorrow. Along with the playback I've mentioned, we also have a number of supports on bankofireland.com forward slash pension pot, such as our latest Talking Pensions magazine. Today, my guest speakers, George Nolan and Evelyn Maloney, will try to unpack some of the key considerations auto enrolment will bring in 2024. We've already received a large number of questions submitted when registering, so thank you for those. We'll try to cover as many questions as we can throughout, but just to note your name is not called out with your question. We do need to flag, though, that in this setting we won't be able to answer questions that are about a specific product or that are very personal in nature. As always, we recommend that if you have any specific queries that you contact your Bank of Ireland branch or you can also go to bankofireland.com forward slash pensions, where you can arrange to speak with one of our advisors who will be happy to answer more detailed and personal pension questions. My first guest speaker today is George Nolan. You're very welcome. George is a pension specialist with Bank of Ireland Life with over 30 years industry experience. My second guest speaker today is Evelyn Maloney. Evelyn, you're also very welcome. Evelyn is a corporate pensions and risk consultant at Bank of Ireland. She has over 20 years experience working closely with both domestic and international clients. OK, so let's get started. George, I'm going to start with you. Can you run through the basic details of the scheme and who's going to be enrolled in it? Thanks, Bernard. And delighted to be back again talking pensions. Um, I think the first thing to say is that auto enrolment, as you said, has been a long time in the making. Um, it's, we're the last of the EU recognised countries and OECD countries to introduce it. It is a positive because it will increase pension coverage and it will mean that there's less burden on the state pension in terms of providing income for employees in retirement. What it's going to mean in practice is that any employee who is not in a private pension scheme through their employment will be auto-enrolled into the system and the likely start date is the middle of next year. The employer and employee will have to make contributions and at the start in year one that will be one and a half percent of gross income. So it's total earnings and that includes any bonuses, overtime, etc. Which is quite different to a standard occupational pension scheme which is probably based on basic salary. So the contributions will start flowing in. They'll be routed into what's called a central processing agency and they will then farm those monies out to be invested between four different providers who have yet to be appointed. And that will all happen before the end of this year. In terms of eligibility, if you're an employer and have staff between the age of 23 and 60 who are earning more than €20,000, they're the ones that must be auto-enrolled. And you also have to prepare with your payroll provider to ensure that you're ready to start taking those contributions and remitting them across to the central processing agency. So we start with 1.5% contribution by the employees and employers. How does that evolve over time? Well, it's a quite quick turnaround to, to ensure that contributions meet adequacy requirements because, well, look, we all know 1.5% by both the employer and employee won't create a huge pot of, of money for someone at retirement. So in year four, the contributions will increase to 3% 3, 3 and 3%. In year seven, they go to four and a half and four and a half. And after year 10, there'll be 6% employer contribution and a 6% employee contribution. There is no tax relief on the system. Uh, the government make additional contributions on top of the employee. And for every three euro that the employee pays, 
the government will pay one euro, which effectively equates to a 25% tax saving or tax relief. Different, as we know, to the current system, where if you're on the higher rate, you would qualify for 40% tax relief. So they are contributions will ramp up quite quickly. So you've mentioned we've been talking about this for a very, very long time. So what are the timelines that are in, in place at the moment? Well, again, the final design has yet to be uh, published. The plan is that that would be published before the end of the year and agreement will be, will be put in place as to those conditions I was talking about. I don't see them changing. I think they'll, they'll stay the same. Um, there is an option to enrol if you're less than 20,000 or if you're younger than 23 or older than 60. But again, those finer details will come out through the bill and that bill is due shortly after the budget in November. The proposed rollout date has always been a, a, a challenge for the government. I think successive governments have pushed this out because economic conditions perhaps weren't correct and right at the time to roll it out. But um, it will happen not on the 1st of January, as initially proposed. It's going to happen at some stage in 2024. We expect that to be around mid-year. So I'd be aiming for July. So again, employers need to start considering their options in advance of that date and well in advance of that date. Before I turn to Evelyn, you mentioned the scheme applying for employees. What about the self-employed? Are they catered for with this scheme? Well, there's two aspects, I suppose, for self-employed. But if you are self-employed employing anybody, as many businesses do, uh, you will have to look at your employees. If they don't have a private pension or you don't have a private pension in place for them, they're going to have to be auto-enrolled. Um, if you are self-employed and you haven't got your own pension provision, the plan on day one is not to include self-employed people. But as the system evolves, they are intending to uh, make it a voluntary option so that if you're self-employed and you have yet to get advice in terms of getting a pension, you can go into the auto enrolment system. But there are other options available, particularly through Bank of Ireland Life. And I think you know, getting advice in that space is key. Evelyn, can I bring you in here? What should companies focus on in relation to employee engagement around this auto-enrolment issue? Well, firstly, um, it's going to be obviously something that's going to be um, very much in the media, in particular over the coming months. Um, so it's really important that employers have a, a communication plan, I suppose, in place in relation to any potential changes that are going to come down the track for them and potentially the impact that those changes are going to have on employees. It's only natural that um, employers are going to have more concerns when they hear about auto-enrolment. And it's really important that um, employers are in a position to be able to be prepared for that. And secondly, for employers that are out there that will ultimately have to go down the road of auto-enrolment, Again, really important that they communicate what that's going to look like for employees, um, what that's going to mean ultimately um, for employees, how it's actually going to work, you know, the, the ins and outs of, of how you're going to be opted into the scheme, what it's going to mean to you in terms of contribution levels. You know, really important from an investment perspective, obviously that's something that we, we do an awful lot of work and spend a lot of time on when it comes to our company pension plans. So equally, you know, on the auto enrolment side is to make employees aware of those potential choices that they're going to have available. So, George, what Evelyn's talking about is, is companies carrying out their auto enrolment audit. And out of that, they really can look at the, either the possibility of going down the route of a company pension scheme, an occupational pension scheme, or alternatively employing the state auto enrolment scheme. So what are the key considerations in that decision? Well, I think uh, personally that, you know, employees need to be brought into the conversation because it's ultimately a benefit for these employees. Mm -hmm. And in my view, an, a standard occupational pension scheme, as we would see today, could offer better value for money for an employer because they are going to have to make a contribution and as we said that is going to ramp up significantly so it's engaged with your employees but the benefit I see with an uh, occupational pension scheme as opposed to auto enrollment is that you as the employer take control in designing the scheme you set the contribution rates now there will come a time where those contributions will have to be at the same level as auto enrollment but as I said earlier, you can use basic salary as opposed to total income, and you're allowed to do that. You can have um, what's called vested rights, which means that as you pay into the scheme on behalf of your employees, if they were to leave within the first two years of working for you or being a member of the scheme, you can actually, as an employer, take a refund of your contributions back. With auto enrolment, all the money that goes in on behalf of the employer will stay in the member's account uh, throughout their life. Uh, other things to think about would be investment choice. 
I alluded to the fact that there'll be four investment managers. They're going to offer four types of funds. You don't pick one particular investment manager. You'll get the returns on average of all the four. With an occupational pension scheme, you can avail of investment choice. You can pick funds that uh, meet all attitudes to risk. And as an employer, you can give your employees a better opportunity to perhaps grow their funds as they move towards retirement. And also those employees can make additional voluntary contributions, which are not allowed currently under the auto enrollment system. The, the rigid contributions, they're fixed, and that's all that the employer and the employee can pay. And tax relief. Uh, we talked about tax relief, and tax relief is going to be a driver for a lot of employers. They're going to look at the current system and think, that would suit my staff better. So it's all about attracting and retaining staff for me. At Bank of Ireland, we do have a system uh, that we use, an administration system that was auto-enrolment designed. So it does take away a lot of the pain points of running a scheme in terms of contributions flowing in, members joining. Uh, it's called My Pension 365. And in the marketplace, it's going down really well because it also gives a lot of engagement back to the member and the member can then engage with their scheme, make contributions, make investment switches. So we're really proud of that system. And I think, you know, talking to an advisor in advance of auto enrolment coming out is, is really important. So Evelyn, George just talked about uh, member engagement and that's critically important in the success of having a good pension scheme or benefits package for any company out there. What are the key steps you think that companies need to take with regard to member or employee engagement in general? Well, I suppose really it's important that um, employers start communicating as early as they can with employees in relation to this change that's coming. Um, anybody that's going to, co to continue with their occupational scheme, say for instance, if a company has a current occupational pension plan in place, there may be concerns, for instance, with members because a lot of those plans will now need to be amended and adjusted to meet the, the auto enrolment in, uh, requirements. And it also might mean that it's you know, there may be genuine concerns um, from employees um, about auto enrolment and what it's going to mean and potentially if there's any impact to, to, to them. Because a lot of the company pension plans, like George has alluded to, for instance, um, you know, their pay will be calculated on, on um, gross earnings as opposed to typically most of our company pension plans are set up as a percentage of their basic pay. So, again, it'll, it'll involve um, a lot of, I suppose, a lot more onerous for um, the employer in terms of the administration side in that it'll be a variable pay that ultimately they're going to have to put in place um, in terms of remittance contributions um, into the pension plan. So that's, that's one aspect, I suppose, that it will change. I suppose the other thing that we see a lot is that typically a company pension plan like for probably 90% of our company pension plans are set up where they have an eligibility um, and typically the eligibility to participate in the company pension plan is linked to a probation period. Now that probation period for most companies is typically six months but with auto enrollment obviously it's immediate so that's one of the key, one of the main areas as well that employers are going to have to address and identifying those gaps is really really crucial at this point in time and being able to put an, a, a roadmap I suppose in place in terms of how they're going to communicate that with, with um, employees because you know it's only natural that they're going to have concerns so it's to be able to have those conversations early um, to avoid any I suppose communication or any confusion um, the near they get to actually implementing auto enrollment. So really, I suppose, key to, to, to start communicating with employees as soon as possible, Bernard. George, companies are looking at putting budgets together for 2024 and possibly for a few years after. What should they be factoring in in terms of auto-enrolment at this stage? Well, again, as I said, the contributions will ramp up very quickly. Um, you know, these, you now, if you have never had a pension scheme in place, this is going to be an additional budget and, and more money that you weren't paying last year that you're going to have to pay this year and it's as every employee joins they have to be enrolled on day one as well so you know if you're recruiting you have to take that into consideration as well that this is going to cost uh, additional contributions for you uh, as you go forward i think in terms of value for money though for me it's it's you know, look at a pension scheme as an asset to attract staff to retain staff and, you know, look at this as an opportunity from an uh, auto enrollment being launched to think about pensions in terms you probably haven't thought about before mm. and see what is the best solution for you, 
what is the best solution for your employees and also from a HR perspective, your, your HR people as well. So I think uh, there's a lot to take into account um, and it is coming uh, quickly now as well. So time to start thinking about this in real terms. So Evelyn, if you were to outline the practical next steps for employers in relation to auto-enrolment, what would you recommend? Bernard, really, I suppose the most important part uh, now for employers is to have an audit. So an auto-enrolment audit, um, that's first and foremost that they put that in place. Secondly, uh, communication is obviously really, really important about any potential changes that they're going to make to their existing structure or any potential changes that they're going to to, to impact em employees into the future. And thirdly, I suppose, is around implementation. It's really important that they have that roadmap set out, that they are ready. Um, this is you know, going to become a reality. Uh, I know it's been talked about for a long time, but it's really important that they're ready and they're prepared for this. Finally, George, before we wrap up, is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, I think it is, it's the now, now is the time to start engaging. I would echo what Evelyn said in terms of your, if you think you have, just because you have an existing pension scheme, I think that's what a lot of yeah. employers would think. I'm fine. I don't need to worry about this. I think it's really important that you review the structure of that scheme. From an employer's perspective, it's really just keeping on top of this as it evolves. Um, as we said, the legislation has yet to land, but there is some very helpful information for employers and employees on gov.ie, so I think you could start there. And if you are considering uh, an alternative to auto-enrolment for staff, it's time to engage, talk to your Bank of Ireland advisor, see what alternatives are there and work with your employees to implement the best plan for both employers and employees. That's brilliant. My thanks to George and to Evelyn today for their expertise and insights. We hope that you've got some real food for thought from our discussion today and that you picked up some good pointers to steer you going forward. I hope that you've gained more knowledge about what's right for you, your retirement goals and your financial well-being. That was a very thought-provoking piece and I know for many of our customers listening today, there was a lot to digest. So rest assured, this webinar will be available to play back on bankfireland.com forward slash pension pot by this Friday, November the 17th. We always send out a short post-event survey to see how we did and how we can improve for our future webinars. So if you'd please help us with that, we'd really appreciate it. And don't forget, you can watch back this webinar and download our range of supporting content articles on bankfireland.com forward slash pension pot. That's it for us for this year's Pension Pot series. We hope you got a lot of useful information and learned a little about the world of pensions, some key considerations and the options available. If you'd like to arrange a meeting with your local wealth advisor like Evelyn, following on from our webinars, you can arrange a call back on bankofireland.com forward slash pensions. Many thanks for joining us today, but for now it's goodbye from us.